Mark and his adventures with his beloved watermelons. Well, there were the cherries. When it comes to fruit, there's always other fruits that you can like. Cherries are perfect on cupcakes. But you know, watermelon is best. Even though these cherries make these cupcakes look absolutely sweet. And they say forbidden fruit tastes sweetest. Watermelon is not forbidden, but it does taste really sweet. Watermelon is just rich like a pomegranate, succulent, luscious. Now, how did this romance begin, you know, between Mark and the watermelon? Was it the watermelon that seduced him? Because, let's face it, it is a luscious, sweet, sexy fruit but you know I think like attracts like because Mark too is sexy like a watermelon you know yeah I'll take a look he's nice and thick as they say T H I double C and he's just got that very fine form if you unzip him you know like we're unzipping the watermelon here you know you can see the pecs six pack of the, everything now we're not objectifying we're not doing any objectification here we are doing some appreciation some art appreciation of aesthetics of beauty i mean the ancient greek name for the watermelon was pepon and they knew it had healing properties so people like hippocrates and Dioscorides, they talked about its great property. Now look at Mark, like a watermelon, strong arms. You do need strong arms to carry watermelons, and he's very strong. Yes, just look at those fine, strong arms and that physique, you know, embracing and holding the, the watermelon. And it's it's lovely and cooling, and it helps with fevers if you... In the ancient times, they would put some uh, on some of the fruit on the little children. Now here, party time. Watermelons great for parties. They even gave him a watermelon cake because he deserves it. And he is very much like a watermelon. As you can see, look at the comparison. Again, go back to the the appreciation, the appreciation of Mark. His fine physique there. They call it the glutamus maximus, I think. There, that fine form, is fine, fine shape. If we look at him from, from the back, yes, like, like the watermelons. A couple of perfect, ripe, happy, perfect watermelons. And it's there, isn't it, the, uh, the analogy? It works, the comparison. So it's a lovely fruit it's very cooling and it's very hot as well when it is mark oh tell you a story the adventures start did you know about the watermelons there are certain folklore and mythologies they say do not leave the watermelon outside in the dark because if you leave it out there for too long it turns into a vampire and sometimes they find drops of blood on the vamp on the watermelon. So we did one day it did happen. Mark was asked to come and deal with this watermelon vampire. Isn't it scary? So he does deal with it as you know, like the vampire bats there as a bat with watermelon. So but Mark was clever. He gave the watermelon vampire these chews, these vampire chews, these sweets, and there's these other sweets. To now eat these instead of biting and stuff. They have these gummy, these, goodness me, what kind of candy is this? But there we go. Um, we can have a look at these more, less sort of kinky things. Gummy watermelon panties, for goodness sake. Maybe. You'd want to wear something like that for him, but we are good girls, so we're going to look at these. So the vampire ate them, and he ate the seeds from the, vamp from the watermelon, and I think eventually he stopped wanting to do vampire activities like drink blood. He just wanted to eat chews. He was a reformed character. 
So wasn't that splendid? Mark re-educated him because he's a very intelligent young man. So yes, the gummy, the, the watermelon flavour gummy panties for him and her. Now by day, uh, Mark was slaying monsters and by night he was entertaining. He was slaying the crowd with his rapping, his singing, his dancing, being an idol, NCT. Yeah, his work was never done. So he even found time to carry on his, his other job, you know. Being an idol on the stage. Look at him. There. That perfect cute face. But he can be such like a tough kind of character. He can rap and he can sing. Very original. And he writes so many of the raps and contributes to the songwriting. But yeah, he's fine. Fine and perfect and luscious. Delicious, like the watermelon. Now he had another adventure, Mark, that he did. He was called to deal with some monstrous fruits. Yeah, just look at them. There, look, they were causing havoc. And Mark had to come over and sort it out. And they were bragging. They cornered Mark because they knew he could. He was the one to protect people and he was always with a watermelon and the watermelon was his friend and companion. And the fruit said, we are capable of anything. We're going to make ourselves big. And we're going to go on a destruction spree. And Mark said to them, well, are you? Yeah, you can make yourself really big. And well, one of the leaders, the leaders of the gang, this very aggressive strawberry, said yeah well we can do anything just just ask us well, you know and we can do it we can make ourselves huge and huge and mark said well being huge yeah and he, all bullies are big bullies always try when they're the bigger ones they bully the little ones well let's see how clever you are i want to see you make yourself tiny can you make yourself so small that you fit into this here jar and mark was ready to fight but he thought no i'm not going to fight I'm not going to I've got the ability, because he has, Mark has the ability to be a tough guy. So he told the bullying monster fruits to shrink. And he, and he used their arrogance and their self-importance against them. And so they did reduce themselves into a tiny size and squeeze into the fruit. Voila, look at this. Into their jars they squeezed. And then Mark, what did he do? He sent them out two people because it was jam now turned into jam you could spread it on toast and eat them and it was scary no more see you could just eat eat that lovely jam those bullying monster fruit we're not going to bully anybody anymore and all the watermelons in town were no longer going to be scared they were all going to be happy so there was a party going on now he was invited to a party and there were lots of watermelon parties for him because like this badge says mark you're one in a melon yeah one in a million one in a melon get it anyway yes watermelon loves mark and mark loves watermelon so yeah can you imagine look at this little baby rattle party was held cakes and everything and there were ogres causing havoc King Ogre and his friend, the Emperor Ogre, they were coming over, trampling over the cakes, always terrorising the party goers. The watermelon party, they, they just hated people having a good time. Look at this watermelon party, it's beautiful. And they hated people being happy. So Mark, he had to save the day. What did he do? He put on his magic invisibility watermelon t-shirt. When he put this t-shirt on, Mark became invisible. Well, when you're against monsters, you have you can't show yourself. He could not show himself at his party because he knew it would just be, you know, terrible. So then let's stop there and I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened. He had his um, clothes on, his, uh, his special t-shirt. And 
he he kind of crept up behind the emperor, the king ogre and the king emperor, and he tapped them on the head and tickled them and pinched them. And so they turned around. They could see nobody, but they felt somebody was pinching them. So the king emperor turned to the turned to the other uh, uh, ogre and said, you're pinching me, you're doing this. Why are you playing this silly game? Why are you doing this to me? And the other emperor said, no, you're the one doing this to me. No, it's you, no, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you. not me, it's you. And so they started arguing and fighting. And they fought so hard, they reduced each other to dust. And that was the end of the Watermelon Party Monster Threat. So, but the adventures continue. Well, you don't, don't know if you've heard about the watermelon treasures, but here they are. And the watermelon treasures were stolen and kept by this dragon who loved treasure, because dragons love treasure. And... He was guarding them with all his ferocious might. And Mark was sent to retrieve the treasure. As you can see, he was there with his fists ready, ready to fight. But he always uses his brains. He's not the sort to be violent. And the dragon was huge, so couldn't just, you know, pick a fight with somebody like that. And Mark was tough. He was fierce. He stood up to the dragon and said, you better give it back. All these beautiful treasures these watermelon treasures and rings and diamonds. And the, water, uh, and the dragon said to him, What is your name, boy? And Mark, being clever, said, My name is No One. Yes, okay, No One, you just sit there. I am going to eat you last. First, I'm going to eat all the watermelons. I'm going to have all of the watermelons. And then, you know, oh, why is an ogre come back? Stop it. The ogres are dead. Now, the uh, the treasure, the watermelon, I'm going to eat first of the dragon, and then I'm going to eat you. Yeah, yeah. So, what the dragon was busy getting drunk because he was going to start a party. He's going to start a party. So, while he got drunk and fell asleep, uh, Mark... And his watermelon companion blinded the dragon. And the watermelon, like a cannonball, bashed against the walls of the cave and made a hall. Made, um, and made like, made a hall, made a hole. <laughs> they made, maybe they did make a Well, it was like a hall. Made a hole in the hall of the cave and escaped. Yeah. And the dragon was furious, he was blinded, he got up, stumbled around and said, Oh no, am I... he felt around, his treasures were gone. My treasure, no one's stolen my treasure, he's called to his neighbour. No one has stolen my treasure, no one has taken all of my treasure, get no one. And then all the dragons came out and said, What, if no one's stolen your treasure, go back to your cave, go back to sleep. And then the dragon neighbours went back to sleep and did not help. They did not help uh, the the dragon at all. So Mark was clever and he took all the treasures back to the rightful owners. And everybody gave Mark his watermelon, which he held in his strong arms. Look at that. And he looks admiringly at it and lovingly. Just so sweet. So these are... Lovely things for a watermelon. Oh, accessory, a pillow. He slept on his watermelon pillow. And there's, and he played with the watermelon, went to the beach, kicked a beach ball around. There he is, carrying it in his strong arms. The affection and love, it's wonderful to see. He's got a lot of love to give. And there, watermelon loves him, he loves watermelon, and we love Mark. We love him. And he always offers us watermelon. He's so sweet. Sometimes he even dresses as a watermelon, as you can see. That lovely green hair, the red lips. Sometimes he's a blonde watermelon. Did you know there are yellow watermelons? Yellow ones like this. See? Oh, you didn't know that. I love the watermelon. And watermelon says, I love thee, Mark. And we love him too. He's just... Delightful, isn't he? They're looking so cool. Cool. They say cool as a cucumber, but cool as a watermelon too. Yeah. That's just so sweet. 
Now I'm going to share some dating tips to date Mark in a bit. Now we'll just have a look at him being perfect. Ah, oh, can you see that? It's cool, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> flashing up. Look at his oh, abs. But yeah, to be his girlfriend, of course you would want to continue the watermelon theme to keep him interested. So there are accessories and, and things you can wear. Um, again, we're going to have a look at him being strong. Wouldn't it be lovely to be in these strong arms? Yeah, he's strong enough to carry a watermelon. You'd never, you'd always be safe. Always feel safe in his arms, wouldn't you? Because he can be so aggressive, so cute. So aggressive. Yeah. Oh, right, look at that. L the lusciousness and the sexiness of the watermelon. That's just like Mark. That the flesh, it's the sweetness of it, and just to get your fingers in there and feel it soft west wetness just a beautiful cooling fruit Pliny the Elder he was a Roman naturalist and writer he was a fan of the fruit and he described it as a cooling a refrigerant a maxime extremely cooling now it is the if you were on a, on a desert a lot of people keep watermelons for that reason because of the high water content that lovely wetness Look at these lollies. Yeah, healthy. These are healthy desserts. And of course, you, as a girlfriend, you'd buy him this watermelon shirt because you love him. And you'd make him this heart shaped, you know. And of course, for a, of course, you'd have a party and have a fun, oh, that fun thing. And water, you'd, and in your home, you'd put watermelon accessories. You'd dress like this, you'd wear this headband. Yeah. And he'd buy you this kind of tiara thing with made with watermelon theme. And you go for a drink, drink juicy watermelon beer or apple juice. Do your nails like this, yeah? Yeah, you see that, girls? Do your nails like this. And uh, bring him this heavy watermelon beer. He'd like that. And, and just be looking totally luscious. And uh, again, there's some more examples of how to do your nails. And just be cute and go out for a watermelon pizza. There is so much variety. And when you marry him, there'd be watermelon art in the house like this. He'd be so romantic. He'd buy some of that, you know. He'd, he'd live in a palace, watermelon theme, with the green and the red. And you'd let it, you'd go for a ride on his motorbike. Look at him with his watermelon helmet. And at night he'd put his slippers on and you'd both sit on the balcony of your palace and watch the sunset. Isn't that lovely? He'd be such a romantic boyfriend or husband. The end. Bye. Like and subscribe. Oh God. <laughs>